I think every teacher should have a collaborative digital whiteboard as part of their technology toolkit. For years, my go-to has been Jamboard. So initially, I wasn't all that excited when Google announced that as of December 31st, 2024, Jamboard would no longer be available. Now that Jamboard's dead, Google has officially endorsed FigJam as one of its replacements. The reality though is that FigJam is much more than a replacement of Jamboard. It's a significant upgrade. And that's because FigJam addresses some of the most annoying issues with Jamboard. For one, in Jamboard, you are confined to a pretty small space, but in Big Jam, the canvas is almost infinitely scalable. And for some reason in Jamboard, you couldn't add hyperlinks. Not only can you hyperlink text in Fig Jam, you can even embed videos, websites, and Google Docs. I know everybody disliked the fact that you could never tell who posted what in Jamboard. In Fig Jam, when a student adds a sticky note, their name is associated with it. Plus, Jamboard had the annoying problem of students just being able to easily erase each other's work. Big Jam has this lock feature that just makes it a little bit more difficult for students to wipe everything out. Perhaps even more important than the feature upgrades is the fact that thousands of companies use Fig Jam for brainstorming, project planning, and online meetings. So when you teach students how to use Fig Jam, you're creating authentic learning experiences that prepare students for what it's like to collaborate online in the real world. And to top it off, just like Jamboard, Fig Jam is 100% free for educators and students. I wanna extend a huge thank you to Figma for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned, schools, educators, and students can get free Figma for Education accounts, which will give them free access to FigJam. I'll put all the links that you need to access that free account in the video description, so be sure to check that out. After you create a free account, you'll see over here that you're gonna be taken to the home page and there you'll see all of the different fig jams that you've created as well as any teams that you've set up to create a new document i'll go here to new fig jam if you're migrating from jamboard you'll notice that you have access to all the same tools that you would have over there you can draw on the board with a pen tool you can use a highlighter you can add sticky notes and text boxes you can also bring in some different shapes and you can add images to the board so fig jam has the same tools but each one is an improvement over the tools in Jamboard. For instance, when you choose the pen tool, not only do you have access to more colors, you can also use this color dropper, which will then allow you to select a color from something like an image and then use that color when you're drawing with the pen. And when you want to erase something, just strike over what you want to erase and the entire thing is gone. That's way better than having to erase the same way that you would with a pencil and paper. And there's so much to love about the sticky notes. You can use different font types, adjust the font size however you'd like, bold a specific word in the text, strike through a part of the text, or add bullet points. When you add new shapes, you can easily connect them using these connector lines. And you can also start from a shape and then draw out the connector line and then easily add another shape to it. This subtle change makes it so much easier to use FigJam for brainstorming, for diagramming, and eventually building your own templates if that's the route you want to go. I really love the fact that after you drop an image in, you can still edit it. So you can see here that I'm trimming this image of Tom, and then I'm also going to resize it and readjust the position within the crop. And then I can also change the aspect ratio to something like a circle and add a border. This gives you so much flexibility with your images and makes them look so much better. Add a little washi tape, and now you're really cooking. Now let's jump in and take a look at this Frayer model template. As I mentioned earlier, FigJam has a wide range of scalability. Pinch zoom on your trackpad or use control or command minus and plus to adjust the size of the canvas. The scalability of FigJam makes it highly effective for small group work. You can still have students contribute in a single digital workspace so they can see each other's work and learn from each other, but they won't be constricted to a single small panel like they would in Jamboard. FigJam has this feature called sections, and sections allow you to split up specific parts of the board. You can just easily copy and paste those sections, rename them, and change the colors, and then have specific sections set up for your different groups. And you can right click on a section to copy the direct link to that section. So notice here how when I share this link and they open it, they'll be taken directly to the part of the board that I want them to contribute to. 
That's a less conventional but really cool way to share a fig jam. More often though, you'll probably just share a direct link to the entire board with students. I'd recommend starting out by sharing fig jam as a view only file and then giving editing access later. I'll show you why. A common scenario may be that you would share a FigJam link through Google Classroom. When a student clicks on the link, they'll have to sign in first before they can even get into FigJam. And that's great because it prevents students from being able to just anonymously post. I like sharing this as a view only document initially for two main reasons. One is because students are gonna be coming in at different times and I don't want them to all just start randomly posting on the board without really understanding what to do. And the second is because there's this tool that I absolutely love in FigJam. It's kind of hidden, but when you hover over your icon, you'll see that you have the option to spotlight yourself. Once all your students get into the FigJam, then you can turn your spotlight on. And what you'll see here is that it's going to make students essentially track what you're doing on your screen. You can use this as an opportunity to do a little bit of direct instruction, orient students to the FigJam. And then once you're ready, you can go back to the sharing permissions and change it from view to edit. You can see here that when students are moving their mouse cursor around, their name also shows up next to it. And when they add a sticky note, you'll be able to see who created it. Now that we have multiple students on the board, let's take a look at what it's like to have students interacting with each other. One way that they can do this is by using this stamp tool. The stamps are just a quick and easy way for students to be able to give some feedback on each other's work. Students can also use the emote tool to give each other feedback that creates this little animation instead of creating a permanent stamp. If you wanna give more in-depth feedback or want to have students communicate with each other in a more robust way, you can also show them how to use the comment tool. You can leave comments anywhere on the board or on specific posts. But you can also tag people in comments and then when the person replies, you can see that that shows up in a separate comment thread. The features I just showed you are more than enough to get you started. But if you're looking for extra functionality, here you'll see that you have more options to choose from. The main things to look at here would be the widgets and the plugins. Widgets are like little add-ons like this dice tool that you see here, and plugins add even more functionality to your board. Even if you are planning on getting into plugins right away, I would recommend getting the Unsplash plugin. The Unsplash plugin will allow you to easily add images directly from Unsplash. You'll also know that those images are copyright free. You can add an image to the background of a section or you can add an image independently on the board, which you can then adjust and crop just like you can with any other image. Now let's take a quick look at a few ways you might use FigJam in your classroom. One is to use it for whole group collaboration, but this template would be a good one to use for either a beginning of class check-in or an end of class exit ticket. Here, I'm just gonna change the text to ask students what they learned during class, and then students can post on that sticky note. They could use this four corners template to have all of your students express their opinion about a topic. As I showed before, FigJam is also ideal for small group work. You can just take separate sections, copy and paste them over and over, have those represent each of your groups, and then you have all students working in a single workspace, but also working on their own smaller section. You can also use FigJam to have students do individual or partner work. There are a few templates like this one that are great for that. If you have a template like this that you wanna share with students, here are a couple pro tips for this scenario. One is that you should force a copy of this document for students. The way you do that is by going up to the purple share button, then getting the editable link. Before you share that link with students, delete everything up until the name of the document in the URL, add a backslash, and then the word duplicate. Then when a student opens that document, they'll have their own copy of it. And if you share this through Google Classroom, you'll already also be shared on the document. So you don't have to worry about having students share the document back with you. Then when students are done, you can have them get the view only link and share that link back on a FigJam board. And it will embed a snippet that students can click on to see each other's projects in view only mode. But this is a great way to have students showcase their work and also not be able to edit each other's work. Don't forget that all educators and students can get a 100% free Figma for Education account. I'll put the links for those in the video description. So be sure to sign up and I'll see you in the next video.